Here we go. Hello, everyone. It is October 26, 2021, and this is the Cloud Custodian Community Meeting. I'll be your host today, George Castro. Just a reminder that uh, this meeting is under the CNCF Code of Conduct, so please be excellent to each other. And just a reminder that we do record these meetings, and they will be available on YouTube along with all the notes after we are done. So it's been a while. Uh, we took a break there for KubeCon Cloud Data Con slash Governance as Code Day. So we almost have a met in a month. Uh, so we've got a, an agenda with a lot of good stuff here to talk about. Uh, both Kapil and Umer send their regards are not attempt, able to attend today, but we will be here next time. So we like to have introductions and things like that. So if it's your first meeting or you want to say hello, um, this is the time where we do that. Don't feel pressured to uh, do so unless you want to, but um, I'll go first. I'm George. I'm in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I'm getting ready for a big college football game this weekend, and I'm the community manager here at Clock Custodian, and my job is to arrange things like this. Um, anyone else want to say hello? Sure, I'll go. Um, my name is Liz. Pronouns are she, her. Um, I uh, am coming at you live from the city of San Francisco in California, in the United States. Um, I am a developer advocate at Stacklet, and I really love pugs. So. <laughs> and the beagle is my dog of choice. Anyone else yeah. want to say hello? Sure. Um, I'm Jameson Roberts, Solutions Architect here at Stacklet, and a very avid Cloud Custodian uh, fan and user. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and you've got some agenda items for today, which would be awesome. Anyone else want to say hello? I don't know if AJ was reaching for the mute button or not. Looked like you were. All right. Uh, let's get started. All right, so I tossed the notes URL uh, in the side. We like to take notes of everything that we have. Um, and then we check these into GitHub, and then I always publish these notes uh, on the Google group for Cloud Custodian, which you can find a link to on the website and things like that. So uh, if you could scroll down a little bit, Liz, to like the agenda items. Um, so we finished the intros. Uh, like we said, welcome back. And um, we have some agenda items. First, I want to cover uh, Governance as Code Day. Uh, this happened last week on Tuesday. Was it last week? Two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Time flies. Um, as part of KubeCon slash Cloud Native Con, um, we had incredible turnout, over 2,500 people representing over 50 countries. Uh, many thanks to our speakers and attendees. Um, I know a lot of people from our community uh, submitted talks, and uh, we were able to get some fantastic content. And we're in luck because we recorded everything. And uh, so if you weren't able to attend, um, there's a link there to the YouTube playlist. Um, that has all of the talks. Um, you know, you could just link to each one. And then here in the notes, I put Umer did like a blog write up of the uh, of the events. If you want to look for like the summary, and he has a link to all of the individual talks there as well. Uh, so definitely check those out. Something I like to do after large conferences, you can't ever watch enough because there's so much content and multiple tracks. Um, a pro tip, if on YouTube you can set your playback speed to 1.25 and you can get through a lot more technical content uh, quickly. So that's how I've been kind of trying to make my way through that monster playlist. So definitely check that out. Um, and semi-related, State of the Custodian, one of those talks was uh, Kapil and I kind of doing a State of the Custodian. Uh, so if you are using Custodian or maybe you haven't kept up with development, uh, what we tried to do, the mantra for this talk was, um, let's try to summarize the development that's been happening uh, over the past year. So if um, you're interested in maybe underdeveloped features that you know, you're kind of wondering where they're happening or what the state is of Azure, Google, Kubernetes, all that kind of sort of stuff, uh, that is the one talk. I would recommend if you only watch one talk, that's probably the one to watch. Um, so that has a lot of bunch of interesting stuff. And I added a to-do there. I still need to export the slides to make sure uh, that we put that there. I want to put that on the README list or maybe the website. I don't know. We can think about ideas of where it makes sense. Uh, anybody have any questions or comments about that uh, before we move on? 
or any of you there are able to attend? Anyone go? That didn't have to go because you were speaking, or it's like your job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went to part of it. I thought it was pretty good, especially the session you're talking about. All right, awesome. That's always cool. good to know. Uh, yeah, so for sure we have those on YouTube and share them with a friend. Um, all right, moving on to the, the the usual agenda. We have a regular weekly doc sprint sessions. Um, this has been an item that we've been wrestling for the past month, and then we had to kind of take a break for um, uh, for KubeCon. This is documenting server-side filters. And this, I think, is pretty much, Liz, I don't know if you want to open the link uh, uh, to show yeah, people, but 6918, and I'll toss the link in chat here. All right, I'm trying to make it so you don't have to use your computer. Um, do you, do you I'll, I'll toss the link here on the side. Do you want me to share it? You don't see it. Uh, yeah, and I pasted the link in chat for those that want to okay. uh, follow along. So this is this is one where we were in the middle of getting a bunch of feedback here, and I think I just need to accept your successes changes and merge. Um, or accept your suggested changes and then send it to Kapil for review, I think is what I meant to say. Um, so that is in progress. And for those of you who are not aware, we do uh, every Friday, Liz and I kind of spend an hour, we grab a thing that we think is annoying in, in the documentation or uh, maybe there's a bug report and our user says something is confusing. Uh, and then we just uh, do a PR on the spot and we try to fix it. Uh, documenting service drive filters has taken us quite a long time because we had to go unravel. It's like one of those things you keep pulling a string and then you find another thing that you should probably document and then that PR ended up getting uh, rather large. But I'm hoping to close this off on Friday. Uh, Liz or AJ, you were reviewing this. Anything you would like to add or any color here on this one? Nope. Um, yeah, I just added all my suggestions. Um, so yeah. Yeah. It sounds cool. like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and it sounds like, yeah, it just needs some extra looks at it or eyeballs on it. And um, yeah. Yeah. Worst case, I will get to that on Friday. If not, I'm going to try to get to, to it today. Um, all right. Yeah, I think my main thing on it was that, uh, kind of like what you're saying, we just need to get something posted out there and keep, because there's a, it's such a big thing and it's so easy to become unclear that there's a pull to just keep revising the heck out of it. And, yeah. Yeah, let's just get it up there. But if anybody here has feedback, if anyone's using it, uh, for sure, have a look. Yeah. I'm also really interested, I know this is weird. I've never done a Git commit with like a co-authored field, and I'm really interested to seeing like how that looks like on like the GitHub charts and stuff. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's we're, a good point. we're figuring it out. It's great. All right, anything else before we get on to events? All right, uh, reInvent's coming up. Anyone uh, know for sure where they're going? I know I'm probably going to go, but I haven't committed quite yet, but I will by the end of the week. Anybody else? I'm planning on being there. Okay. Well, if you're listening out there and you are gonna go to reInvent and then uh, Liz and I are there, definitely reach out to us. We'd love to take you out to dinner or something or stop by the booth um, where you'll find us frantically uh, preparing our demo and that kind of thing. And uh, Maybe you can dive in and we'll show you some uh, some examples of other policies and things that we're working on. Um, upcoming cl Cloud Custodian Day. So these we normally do on the regular um, monthly. They've been on pause because uh, we we're preparing for KubeCon. And those will definitely be starting up here again in November. So between now and reInvent and the holidays, we are hoping to have at least one more. Um, but we don't have a solid date yet. But in the notes there, I have the link. Um, and that's when we're ready to do that. That is the link uh, that we will go to. Anything else on events? Anyone go to any interesting conferences or anything to report or anything upcoming where you you uh, want to see if there's a local clock custodian person to meet, meet you up there? So I'm pretty much myself. I'm 100% focused on reInvent. So that's where I'm going to be. 
So this is Akif here. So I have. Oh, yeah, Akif. Yep. Hi. So I may go to reinvent. Uh, I'm still working with my manager at this time to approve all the funds and stuff. Um, my thing was, you know, I was wondering if we can have a workshop uh, at the reinvent, you know, uh, how to use the other scripts, you know, uh, mm -hmm. C7 and Mailer or C7 Trail Creator, you know, whatever we have. Can mm -hmm. we have those workshops, you know, because uh, I have already said before also, you know, like, um, if we are going in presence, you know, we want something that we can see uh, and interact and, and ask questions and, and get those things done. Sure. So let me put this here in the notes. Yeah, and just um, mention that that's a great idea. Um, we also do, Liz and I did a video on uh, KubeCon, so it's in that link that George posted to all the videos on the Cloud Custodian tools. So we cover like log exporters, C7N org, um, mailer, uh, C7N trail creator, some stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's, it's more at a high level, but we kind of show some use cases of what you might use them for. So that might be a good place to get started if you haven't seen that video. But yeah, workshop would be great to get some people's hands on. Yeah. So Jamison, I have seen that video. That's a good one. Um, but again, I want to see the working mechanism, you know, the step-by-step, -step, how you do stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what I want. That's what I want. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so we are actually um, in the middle of planning like an advanced class that's going to be covering C7N uh, org, like more, not like, not hands on, like a workshop, but just like a class about it where we'll go through um, what that configuration looks like and how to use it. Um, so that will be coming up in November. Um, and in November, too, right now, the tentative plan is to roll um those community workshops into like reinvent so we might be like broadcasting those classes live from reinvent um and it'll mm -hmm. still be open to everyone but yeah hang tight um because yeah those advanced classes are definitely in the works okay good to know yeah well and if you are going to be a reinvent physically of course we'll just sit down and yeah. If you could peel and then we'll record it and then we'll just put that on YouTube. Maybe that'll be the way to do it. But yeah, this is the kind of feedback that um, that I've been looking for. So now that I know that at least one person would show up to it, let's yeah. Uh, I'll need to see who who from engineering will be uh, will be able to. How deep can you go on tools, Liz? What do you mean? Like should like, we uh, should. Like how deep can you go into like workshopping tools um, by yourself, or do we need to ask a Jameson or AJ to come to Vegas? I mean, some of I mean, I could, I could go. Yeah, I mean, with Jameson and AJ and all of y'all's help, I could, I could definitely like take you on a tour of a couple of them um, and feel comfortable doing that. Um, so yeah, but uh, we're working. Like I said, we're working on the class for. C7N org, um, and yeah, yeah it's, it's good to know if someone's interested, and then we can also get feedback after we yeah. present the class. <laughs> Let and, uh, we, a good job. we have two more of these meetings before uh, reInvent, so that'll that'll enable us to kind of see what everyone's travel time and schedule is and where you're staying and whatnot, and then we could probably figure something out um, for sure. And I've taken note of that as well. So I got to get you that Cloud Custodian T-shirt, right? <laughs> All right. Anything else for workshops? All right. Good to know. Uh, that kind of handles the uh, the formal agenda. Um, there's a few more things that uh, that we did want to tackle that are in GitHub, uh, but unfortunately, since Kapil can't uh, attend, he wanted to ensure that uh, he had a look at those items. So we are going to have to pump those. But we do have one. Uh, from Jamison, that is AWS subnet resource add modify subnet action that he wanted some feedback from the community on. And uh, Liz, if you can open this one up, it's pretty much the last item of the list. So I'm not going to need the rest of the notes. So, yeah, this PR, or sorry, this issue. Wait, feature. Which one do you need me to open? Um, uh, right above the backlog. 
the last link before the backlog there. The last under PR is like issue there's, there's review. A, it's not, it's, oh, okay, all right. It's not easy to navigate the two different screens. Yeah, oh, sorry. Okay. It, there it is. That one. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Here it comes. Here it comes. Sorry, I keep putting you on the spot today. I apologize. There you go. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's it's just hard because like Google Meet like put it's all like in the different tabs. So yeah, no worries. Yeah. All, all right, right, Jameson, you have a proposal. Go. Yeah. Um, if you could scroll down a little bit, there we go. Um, so this uh, proposal for feature request is to add an action to the AWS subnet resource, and that action would be a modify subnet action which uh, relates to the uh, EC2 client modify subnet attribute uh, BATO3 call. And the use case around this would be um, if you have uh, subnets throughout your accounts where maybe they didn't get set up correctly or um, whatnot, and they're you know, set to map public IPs on launch. So basically, whenever you launch an instance or a resource in that, uh, subnet, it's automatically getting a public IP, and that might not be desirable. So uh, by adding the modify subnet action, you'd be able to do a policy similar to this uh, sample one in here, where you could scan all subnets, find ones that have the setting of map public IP on launch set to true, and then it could take an action to modify those identified subnets to switch the map public IP on launch to false. Uh, therefore, so any new uh, instances and stuff launched in that subnet would not automatically be assigned public IP. And therefore, that uh, by doing that, running that policy, that would help secure um, some of the infrastructure uh, a little bit by default instead of having to remediate when you see a public IP pop up, having to shut it down or remove it after the fact, just prevent it from automatically launching it with those in the first place. Any thoughts on this one? Cool. I don't really have an opinion. It doesn't look very controversial to me. <laughs> like, uh, seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah, it is very straightforward. So, uh, and uh, so this there'd be other settings. This you could modify with the subnet as well. Um, I don't recall what all those are, but I think you can change some subnet IDs. And uh, let me look at that again here. Yeah, it looks useful to allow. I, I think we might need to just sync up on the uh, the naming of it because I think I think we have set attribute type actions. Uh, I just want to make sure that we follow whatever convention. Uh, that we're using for other resources when we're doing these attribute tweaks. It looks like a useful thing to have. Yeah, but uh, you can you'd be able to adjust, um, you know, assigning IPv6 addresses on creation, map public IPs on launch, the uh, map customer owned IP on launch, um, and then modify the customer owned IPv4 pool as well so a few different things you could use it for not just for the map public ip on launch but ipv4 and ipv6 stuff so all right and sort of a uh, unanswerable question to myself what's what's usually the next step here um I know we have a documenting a back a uh, enhancements process in our backlog. Um, well, if there's no objections or concerns to adding that feature, I think the next step would be finding bandwidth on a developer to um, build it into the, the back end code. And this would be kind of after that, uh, modify subnet feature coming to a custodian near you. Mm. This could be really fun for me to take because it sounds like it's adding. And I know in the contributor docs, I think that there's a section on adding stuff like this. So this would actually be kind of fun and go back to the thing I have on the backlog about the contributor docs. This could be an opportunity for me to walk through that, doing that, going through those docs and like, you know, going through it and seeing where we can improve that documentation. Um, and it doesn't sure. 
seem like it's I understand I think all the pieces here so I think I could do that so then yeah so then is in a ticket filed for this then uh not a ticket um with it being an open source I think we just oh I guess the issue feature request okay okay is that right DJ or George I would think you do a PR and mention this bug, and then it would just auto link, and then when it merges, it would auto close. It'd be all magical, right? I think so. Uh, that would be good. Yeah, I think yeah. this is this is like scoped enough to this feature where I don't think it's big enough to need the like the the big uh, the enhancement, the proposal that like you were talking about. Yeah, uh, so I think issue and then a PR seems good. Our process might just be what Kapil did: was you put kind slash enhancement on the label, and we call it a day. There you um, go. And then, you know, when we need something more complicated, um, we'll do something more complicated. So that might that might be the solution. Um, all right. That pretty much wraps it up for things. Does anybody have anything they'd like to add the agenda or a question or concern or uh, anything before we give you, give you some time back? I would have a, a quick call, and not even a call to action, a call to thought, I guess, only because of uh, some things that I've been noticing recently. I I, I just came across a uh, an action, and James, I think it was when, when you and I were talking about uh, like for S3 buckets when you can set set logging. There's a there was a, a parameter where it'll it's kind of smart about pulling in a a bucket region and and doing doing the right thing. And there was no example policy in the docs that included that option. Um, so I guess the general call to action is if you're looking at a filter or an action, looking at a, a resource documentation, and it looks like the examples are missing something that you think is particularly valuable, uh, I feel like that's a really handy PR to make an example clearer or to add a useful example that's not obvious. Um, so whether you bring it up in Gitter, make a PR or something, it seems like a really nice way if you just you want to contribute something and you're not where to go and you don't know where to go. Uh, a missing example seems like a really cool place. That's it. OK, so let me, let me just write this down here in the notes in front of it that is under the document. Please consider doing a PR. Yeah, PR for missing examples or clearer examples. Maybe George slash Liz. And we'll do it on a Friday. Oh, you know what? That's why I was actually thinking about it was the, the doc sprint. I, I don't know. That could be part of a doc sprint. That can be an out of band thing because it's a, a yeah. smaller thing too. And I'm happy to jump in and kick around examples with people. Um, so yeah, I just think examples are super helpful. Yeah, if you know you, there's an example you want to fix and you don't know and you reach out to us, I'll, we'll figure out a time and come to you. Um, <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, you know, if you're willing to do the work, we will come to you on that one. Uh, but yeah, that is that is a great idea. Call for thought. We are using that from now on. That must that that might be a good section to have there as a regular, you know, things to think about over the next week. Anything else? All right, everybody. We 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 have that backlog that we're going to continue to ignore until uh, <laughs> until we have time to actually get to some of this stuff. Um, but it's generally prioritized and in uh, order by things that need to be scratched. And with that, we're gonna give everybody a half hour back. Thanks everyone for taking the time out of your day. As always, we'll make sure we uh, document all this stuff and send it out on the list. And do make sure you check out those videos because there's a lot of great stuff. We had some great speakers. And thanks again, those of you that participated. And with that, happy Tuesday and happy Halloween for those of you that are celebrating this upcoming week. And we'll see everyone in two week, two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Take thanks, care. everybody. Bye.